Question, but then I need to know. Um, I I don't know about Europe, but, but I know that maybe you're a UFC fan. You mentioned uh, before. Yes. Who's your favorite fighter? Uh, where are you from? Italy, Turin. <laughs> Italy. Uh, I like Marvin Vittori. I love it. <laughs> um, my favorite fighter, jeez. Uh, I do love watching uh, mixed martial arts and Cliff and I have been to a bunch of UFC fights. I think my favorite fighter to watch. 
I mean, after after UFC 300, it's hard to go against Max Holloway. Yes. He's such a BMF. Um, yeah. So I like that. Do you watch? Yeah, I like okay. a lot. Who's your favorite fighter, Victoria? Uh, Charlie, Charles Oliveira. Say again? Uh, Charles Oliveira. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I he's amazing. Yeah. New Bronx? Yeah, yeah he's amazing. <laughs> What's BMF? <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, I thought it was big. big. <laughs> Um, it reminds me of a supernatural related story that I can relate to because I don't know the UFC. But uh, I, uh, my first day on set in uh, whatever, 2007, whatever, season four, uh, my memory is that you and Jensen were crowded around uh, a phone and looking at like UFC videos or something, yeah. And you, so nice, you know, and I'm, you know, they really don't know anybody, and you're like, hey man, come here. And I was like, yeah, and you're like, you, you UFC fan? I was like, I, yeah, I dabble. <laughs> so I'm so not, I, I like the fighting and the kicking. <laughs> I didn't, didn't know anything. But I was like, sure, yeah, show me. I, oh, yeah. Like, no shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, That's that amazing. Um, awesome. Grazie. Thank you so much. Grazie mille. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. So, just a quick warning, it's a silly question. Okay, great. So, yesterday, Rob, you talked about your, you having a little thing about shrimp, right? I love me some shrimp. <laughs> and then I remember from past con that uh, Jared had a nickname, Jumbo Shrimp. <laughs> so, I wanted to know if it could be related or there is a story there, I don't know. He's always been very tasty to me. Do you, <laughs> to all of us. Do you? Oh, oh, oh. Hey, girl. Hands off, sister. <laughs> uh, do you love me, Jumbo me? I just, just normal me. I like Jumbo you. I like you fried. I like you broiled, cocktail skewered. <laughs> Especially scary. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you are are you a fan of shrimp? <laughs> I do love them. You, you, okay, okay. Yeah. What is your favorite type of shrimp? <laughs> do it, do it. You're around your amongst family. Well, jumbo, of course. <laughs> so the question is if 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 Jared is jumbo shrimp. Oh man, I <laughs> What am I? What, 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 what kind of shrimp can I come up? Salad. Salad shrimp? Salad. Or shrimp salad? Popcorn shrimp. No. No, no, just choose. Oh. No, it was his question. You can't answer a question with a question. You have to answer it. Scampy. Scampy. Skimpy. Skimpy. Uh, thank you. And here's to all the jumbo shrimp. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Hi, how are you? Hi, hi again. So, um, Jared, I love your dad jokes. Uh, we share the same sense of humor, and uh, we haven't had any dad jokes during this con, and so I have one for you. Yes. And then hopefully you may have some for us or not, yes. I don't know. Uh, so this is quite embarrassing, really, but uh, however, um, this is it. February, Camp March, but April, May. Ah, I see. That's like, why is six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. That's the same logic, you know. Yeah, That's, uh, okay, yeah. but uh, months can be intimidating, so... <laughs> months, months, yeah, months. We had a conversation with the word months in the uh, green room. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> the word months? The word months. Yeah, because Ricky says, like, mulls. Oh, right. Yes. <laughs> Jensen says, like, mus. Like, he doesn't say the TH. Huh. Yeah. Months. Yeah. I was like, how often do you say months anyways? True, we don't very much. Yeah, we, we don't say it often. I, I, I will tell you, never trust stairs. They're always up to something. <laughs> You're welcome. Were you in, in the green room today where we were watching the video of dad jokes? Yeah. And someone told a really funny one. I hope I get it right. All right. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. oh, man. Okay, the two robbers go into like a 7-Eleven and one robber holds up a bottle of whiskey and says, is this whiskey? And the other robber says, well, yeah, Wobbly's usually whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Wobbing. Wobbing is whiskey. I, 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 I like it. I like it. Uh, very good. Where do, um, where do generals keep their armies and their sleeves? Sorry, sorry, sorry everywhere. We uh, I blame her. Wobbing. Wobbing is whiskey. How are you? I, um, She's like wiping good. vomit off her. She's like, this is disgusting. These jokes suck. No, do you know what it is? I swore that I wasn't going to be the one to bring the tone of the q and I but here we are. Well, what? Uh, <laughs> you swore in front of everybody? Yeah, it was like on my chuck, I'm not going to do this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good story. <laughs> um, so a question for both of you, um, but uh, first of all with a preface, I'm a massive reader. And so I say thank you, but especially to Jen for the book club, it's amazing. Uh, I love that you have Lieber Dugo this month, she's one of my favourite authors, so thank you very much. Amazing. Um, you. So on that note, uh, can you share a book that either of you've read that have changed you for the better and why it was so impactful? Oh gosh, um, so uh, amazing. Uh, Admittedly, I don't get as much time to read these days as I would like. I still do read a lot, but uh, often it's scripts. Um, there was a book called Whale Fall by Daniel Krauss, which is phenomenal. It's amazing book. Um, uh, Pony by Raquel, or uh, RJ. She oh, yeah. RJ Palacio, which is <laughs> love, and she's a friend. Like, we, we, when we go to New York, we'll, we'll meet up with her. Um, and have dinner and whatnot. Uh, those are the two that kind of come to my mind. Uh, I think I touched on this earlier, but for me, when I grew up in San Antonio, Texas, and we didn't have a whole lot, you know, um, I didn't ever think I'd be in Rome meeting people from however many countries. I think Daniela said like 40, uh, which is a, a weird blessing to look in the mirror and go, like, hey, you're in Italy. Like, I thought I'd only ever read about it or see it on TV or movies. Uh, my form of travel and education was reading, and so I, I still love it to this day. Um, and I'm excited to do more of it now that I'm currently unemployed. So if anybody has a job to offer, I'll tell you. Uh, 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 I could be a pool boy. But you can't break any more toes if you're a pool boy. I, I, still, I still will. I can, I can also be a wobble. <laughs> You'd be jumbo shrimp. I could be a jumbo shrimp. Uh, but yeah, those two, uh, Pony and Wellfall, I'd go with. Uh, uh, you know, it, I've read a lot of books that have like really like uh, just I've loved. But when I think about like a book that that made was significant for me, um, when I had my stroke in 2013, and I'm in the hospital in 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 uh, Toronto, and um, a, a buddy of mine that lived there. Uh, came to visit me in the hospital, and he, he brought me this book, and the book is called The Art of Baseball, but it's, it's a fiction book about a, about a, um, a like a, 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 what's it, minor league baseball team, and the uh, two players in the team that were friends, and it's, it's really good, it's a really good book, but in my memory, it's fucking great, because I couldn't speak so good, but um, the, the whole thing was like, could I read? You know, and I could read, so I just, I read, and I was by myself for most of the time, confused, and you know, but I could read, I couldn't speak, it was the weirdest thing about the brain, you know, I couldn't speak, but I could read, and I read this book, and it, it, it just, it was fucking great, because I could read it, you know what I mean, and I, um, and I kept, and I kept, and I have the book still, like, I stole it from him, and I have it, you know, because it means that to me, you know, so that, that was the art of baseball, it's a fiction book, and it's, it's worth the read. <laughs> Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hi. Uh, I'd like to know if there was ever um, an occasion where you messed up a scene so much by like laughing that you couldn't go on and you had to like break off the scene and do something else. Most of the scenes, bro. Yeah, a lot. Uh, Any time that he was there. <laughs> Unintentionally, please. No broomsticks or. <laughs> I will say, you know, I, I, we've talked about it a lot, and in hindsight, um, our episode where uh, 
Sam and Dean and Jack uh, Dispense of Chuck. Uh, we were shooting, it was about an hour outside of, of, uh, of Vancouver, so it was a long drive in, and the way the set was located, our trailers weren't nearby, and so we were all just there, dirty and sweaty and like mud and stuff, because it was a stunt sequence. Uh, and we just laughed and had a good time. Uh, we also, during, during the, leading up to it, it was, we, we flew to Canada in 2020 after the pandemic, you had to quarantine for two weeks. And you, like, when I say quarantine, like you weren't allowed to go into the hallway in your uh, apartment complex. Like, yeah, like I, I had to have my dog with me and I had to get a dog walker. And the way they had to do it is the dog walker has to contact you and you set up your leash inside your door handle, put your dog on the leash outside the hallway, close the door, text them back and say like, hey, it's okay to come pick up Coda. Yeah. They come, they knock on your door and say, hey, I'm here, switch to their leash. Like it was, it was absurd. Yeah. But- It was uh, early days of COVID. So early like, days of COVID, yeah. You uh, had to quarantine in a room by yourself for 10 days, so. Yeah, but Jake Abel and Rob and Jensen and I, we were all quarantining. We started like this this friend Zoom. Like we can't leave, so let's see each other. And so we would Zoom like in the two weeks leading up to that. And I think when we got to set, it was kind of an extension. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'd Zoom and drink. We'd Zoom and drink. Nothing else to do, right? Yeah. You yeah. order alcohol delivered outside your door. Yeah. Um, and groceries. You know, you order groceries, order yeah. everything. But yeah. And we, I wasn't drinking at the time. I was still right, like in right, Europe, right. not doing it. Right. And so I was like, well, they seem to be having fun. Shit. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm speaking for myself. No. I don't even know. I, mean, I know that me and Jake were because there's a story where Jake was on the floor below me at oh, our yeah, apartment. Yes. Yeah, just tell it. And I and uh, he uh, he's like, do you have, you have tequila up there? I'm like, yeah, I got tequila. And he's like, can I have some? I was like, sure. So I found a string and I tied it around the bottle. <laughs> And I lowered it to him while we're zooming with these it's guys. It's all on camera. It's, it's all, all on camera. camera. So we set up our computers so that the guys, Jensen and Jared, in their two different apartments could see us. And it's me lowering the bottle and Jake receiving the bottle, taking it, pouring it, tying it, and then, you know, pulling on it. I pulled it back up to my balcony. By the way, as far as I was concerned, it was like a fucking teaser for a James Bond or Mission Impossible. I was looking at my computer like, yeah. We were starred for entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, we, yeah, and then we, we, we made that video when we were shooting that final scene when they, they you know... Brave Alecky? Yeah, Brave Alecky, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what we would do. Has anybody seen Brave Alecky? Yeah. 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 Yes. So it was stupid shit like that. We were like, okay, let's, let's have fun. Like, we can't go back to our trailers. They're half an hour away. Let's uh, grab some driftwood off of the beach and throw it and grab your camera and we'll do this and that, so... Like the cave, caber? Was it tossing the caber? Yes, yeah, tossing the caber, yeah. Uh, that was fun. Uh, super fun. It was, you know, we, we, we were kind of isolated because there couldn't be a lot of guest stars. There couldn't be a lot of extra people because of COVID. So, you know, it's us and, and Alex and Jake yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of isolated. So just, again, just entertaining ourselves. And I will say this. There were certainly scenes and uh, during Supernatural or in my career where you get the giggles. It's something stupid. Uh, but for the most part, uh, you know, uh, speaking of us on stage, like when you work with somebody like Rob, uh, it, it, it you can fuck around in between takes, and then he's worked so much, he's so talented, that when they call action, like we're professionals, you know? So we certainly have fun, but then they call action. And so when other guest stars, when, when guest stars would come on and they weren't used to working with us, and we're like laughing in takes, and I'm like, hey, and cameras are on, and action. We'd go into character, and they'd be like, what, what? We were all just laughing a second ago, like, well, how am I supposed to not laugh? So we're, we all remain very professional between action and cut. Yeah, that was the great thing about that show too. It was a well oiled yeah. machine. We yeah. could have fun, but then dial it in when we needed to. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for your question. Thank you. Of course. Hi, Barbara. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you. This is my first convention, and I'm just as happy as I can be. Everything is perfect, and I'd like to say thank you to the Supernatural family. They were Amen. so kind of fun, new friends. Thank you. Yeah. read any script of Supernatural where you thought about us and thought, oh my god, the fans are not going to like this, and oh my god, <laughs> the, fan, the fans are going to love this. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the episodes that he and I did together with Ackles, uh, was it the real Ghostbusters? Oh, we were yeah, at a convention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like, either this is going to 
upset them. Let me also say, sorry, to, to back up to the way you uh, introduced your question about meeting friends and fans. So, you know, here we are towards the end of a convention. Um, and when we're not on stage or taking photos or signing autographs, we're all in the room just kind of freshening up, making sure we don't smell, eating some food, calling our families. Uh, and it's occurred to me that my favorite part of conventions are A, lifelong friends that I've met and gotten to know through conventions, and also A, seeing friendships and uh, friendoms that happen uh, among the, yeah. our supernatural family. And I, 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 I've had so many instances where I, I've met people at a convention, they're like, oh, we've been friends for like seven years online and because we both like Supernatural we're, and now we're going to conventions together and it's like we have a girls weekend, we stay up late or hey, we you know, we meet together. So I, I, I fucking love that uh, lifelong friendships are, are built within the Espen family. So yes. thank you all so much. Uh, but yes. To answer the question, yeah, Real Ghostbusters was, was scary. It was like, well, we like, we love these things. Like, are we gonna make them, are, are they gonna think we're making fun of them? Because we're not. Like, we didn't, A, we didn't write it, but B, do they know that they're loved and respected and we want to keep doing, like, we, we love this. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah for, I, for that one, it was interesting because I hadn't been to a convention yet. I, my first convention was literally right after that aired, and I, it was mind blowing. Yeah, I was like, what? Oh, what the hell? Is this, what's real? What's fiction? And, uh, but um, for me, it was the last episode of season 14 when I turn and I say, welcome to the end, you know, and I have that whole thing with you, you shoot the gun or whatever. Like, I was like, oh my God. Because by that point, I built up this great relationship with the fans. And they lied to me, and I'm a dick. I, ruin, I bring the show down. I become your ultimate enemy, right? And I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I literally thought, I was like, the fans are going to hate me. Um, and they did. But, um, we don't. but, uh, but there were, you know, uh, I, there were, when I came back in season 11, because then I did, I wasn't on it for the show from 6 to through 9. So when I came back, when I was a, did a cameo in season 10, the 200th episode, I knew that was going to be a, a cool thing for the fans. And then when I came back, it kind of came out that I was God in season 11. And I played guitar in that one episode, and, and then see the boys at the end of the episode, and like, you know, I got I got some explaining to do whatever I say. Um, that was I knew that was going to be cool. The lowest yeah. that was a positive. Yeah. Thank you all for your goodness.